Hi everyone, in this episode of the Arthur International Show, I am really happy, very honored to present to you a dear artist and friend from Canada, Donna Bonin, who is exhibiting today some of her environmental conservation uh, works, and I'm going to let Donna to be the one to talk to you about it. How are you doing, Donna? I'm doing fine. Thank you. Um, these paintings behind me uh, were in response to Artists for a Green Planet idea that um, Art Tour International actually did send out to me. And I got inspired and I did a number of paintings, actually, and several of them have sold especially the hungry polar bears looking for food floating out on the melting Arctic ice flows. And they, they were received really well, but I unfortunately, a few years ago, I had the horrible experience of seeing elephants slaughtered for their ivory with <clears throat> the elephants there on the ground and the tusks ripped out and the baby elephant crying and I just fell in love with the elephants and definitely um, so angry at people that hunt anything for just sport and game so I did the pink elephant painting to show people how beautiful um, elephants are. Why would you want to um, hunt them for their ivory? And then I heard that now in some of the African countries, they're actually dyeing the, the ivory tusks pink so that they're not as attractive for, you know, to sell on the black market. Um, this painting, sort of from the Arctic, um, I've spent a fair bit of time in the Canadian Arctic and I just, I just love it there. But it has really changed. Global warming is really affecting the Arctic. And this area that was once a glacier, um, it's all cracked off, it's all floating away and melting. And uh, it was just kind of sad to see that happen. Um, the middle one, well, that's not a, any kind of, that's just a funny fantasy. I was in Ecuador, actually on the equator line, and a group of students were there with eggs. They took them out of their cartons, and they dressed them up in little hats and little paper scarves and they lined them all up on the equator line and if they moved off they tipped over and broke and there was just a whole pile of people around watching this little spectacle with the students and um, I took lots of pictures of them and I thought hey this would be a cute idea for a painting but not little tiny eggs all lined up in a row so <laughs> that, so that's only, only at the equator, and the hats are actually, they're called Panama hats, but they were produced and manufactured in Ecuador to send to the Panama Canal, and Ecuador got quite upset that they named them Panama hats, because they're the ones that made them. So, um, my painting, I tend to relate to things that I experience in the world, whether it's just a natural scene or whether it's some kind of a, a feeling that I have about what I'm experiencing around me. You have been one of the artists that have inspired me for the idea of Artists for a Green Planet, actually, because of um, always your love for nature. You're always yeah. either painting flowers, details of plants it's been always within you right well, landscape and detail really yeah. are what i first started with yeah. and i'm finding it difficult to branch off into abstract 
I, I, I know I don't have to, but I mean, most of the things you see in all of the big art shows, most of them are bordering on abstract. And so I've been trying yeah. to border on abstract, and I guess these guys yeah. do. Yeah. I think it's a great um, uh, research what you're doing right now with your this you know this is pretty much abstract so well, it, it is except that it's not right. it's what it was I I did that from a photograph that I took and well the the pink elephants yeah. I have photographs of elephants I just took two that I had and made them pink. Yeah. Well, talk to us about your your daily routine and also what your career. You also teach, right? Yeah, um, I teach watercolor classes uh, for our college in my hometown, Belleville, Ontario. Uh, I generally teach four classes a week, so it keeps me really, really busy, very busy. I teach painting workshops different places in the world. Last spring, before I came to Florence, I, I actually came from France. I'd been teaching there for a month and took two days out to come to Florence. And um, this year we're going out to the Okanagan Valley in British Columbia. Usually do one major trip a year plus two or three other workshops. My daily life is get up in the morning, paint, prepare lessons, maybe do some food shopping, and then go out and teach my lessons. <laughs> it, I, it's just sort of all-encompassing, but I love it. And I don't know what I would do if I weren't painting. Wonderful. And you're good at uh, then at managing your time because you find time to paint yourself. Some. Yeah. Y yeah, I do try to make time for that because what I'm doing in my classes um, I like the paintings that I do as demos in my classes, but they're not necessarily what I would like to do and show. Yeah. All right, so. so what are your plans coming up for 2018? I'm teaching a lot of classes. Okay. I'm visiting my daughter in Australia. Um, I don't know where I will be showing. But obviously, I'm, I'm coming to, to New York, I, and I will be there. Um, and beyond that, it just, as it comes to me, um, I make plans and decisions. Okay. Well, I want to thank you so much for your time. Before we go, a word of inspiration for the young artists out there who are finding and entering in the industry right now. <laughs> Well, keep at it. It's not easy, but it certainly is rewarding. You can't give it up. And I know a number of my students who do because they seem to think they're going nowhere. In, but I see their work improving immensely. So don't give up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Donna, for your time. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone. And just know, don't give up and stay inspired.